Maybe. Yes. This is the most frustrating thing I've ever had to do with YouTube Live. Guys, I'm so sorry for a nine minute wait. Let me know if you guys can hear or see me. Please comment if you can hear or see me. Anybody? Maybe. Please. Please be working. There is quite a delay. Jimmy, you can hear me loud and clear. Oh. Man. That's so frustrating. I reset it three times, three times easily. Doesn't make any sense. YouTube does this like switch thing with like, oh, this, ah, uh, no, never mind. I'm gonna get into it. I'm so sorry for the delay, guys. It is 10 minutes past when I was supposed to start. So you guys are super patient. I am so thankful for you guys sticking around. Everybody's coming in loud and clear. Awesome. Oh, great. I even did a test run prior to this. Whatever. So, guys, welcome to the Motorcycle MD Live q and I'm trying to hit the table too often to shake the camera, but welcome. Uh, every month, I try to sit down and drink coffee way too late and talk about motorcycles with you guys. Um, I, don't, I don't really care which make or model. I specialize in Honda stuff, so that's what I know best. Um, but if you're new here, welcome to the channel. If you've recently subscribed to the channel and you're like, what the heck is this dude doing? Welcome to all my people who uh, comment and are super supportive. Uh, my name's Cody Richards. I am a red level uh, Honda technician. I work at a dealership for full time. I also run this Motorcycle MD content page, website, membership, all types of stuff through the brand um and i just shoot videos on anything that i can get a hold of really um whether it's in the shop a lot of videos that you'll see are just diy tutorials on very common problems with hondas and very common maintenance things that need to be done so again that's what the channel is about i just try to give a professional aspect to uh youtube when it comes to working on your motorcycle because i don't feel like there's a lot out there there are some guys who are out there who are awesome some are not. So I try to be the light in a dark area for you. So what I do is I take a couple minutes and just go over a topic that I feel like talking about that I get um, info on. This time I sent a uh, message out to the members and asked them what they might want to hear about, talk about. A lot of them were questions that I could probably tackle on here. Um, one that I liked in particular was from a, a great friend, a long time Inner Circle member, uh, Mike Reed. He's wanted to Mike Reed. Sorry, I kind of mumbled that. Um, he was curious as to what I thought about what bikes are worth it, what bikes are not worth it. You know, for when it comes to Hondas, w which ones are deemed lemons or which ones are worth owning, which is a great topic because I try not to be. When, when you live in a world around Honda where everything you eat, sleep, and breathe is Honda because you're force-fed it and awake working at a dealership that only works on Hondas, you can be very narrow-minded, um, as I've been very guilty of this, being like, well, dude, Honda's like, Honda is the best ever. I still think that it is. But all I can talk about when it comes to that topic is Hondas. I mean, I'm sure there are better bikes out there. Um, different styles, different models that are better than Hondas. There are other companies that make great side-by-sides compared to Hondas. There's lots of side-by-sides and four-wheelers that I, or things about the four-wheelers I dislike, but that doesn't make them a bad company per se. So that's all I can really talk about. Just like really small things that I find with certain models that Hondas put out in the past decades. I don't know all of them. I haven't worked on all of them. 
Um, that's the topic we're going to talk about tonight. Which ones I think are worth the money, which ones um, – and I'm not going to hit on every bike, because obviously that would take all night. But just some, I, I wrote like a little list. I, I did like a little diagram, like good, bad. And I kind of like just mentioned a few. So there are ones that I'll miss and ones that I will, um, yeah, miss on both good and bad sides of the spectrum. But again, welcome to everybody who's joining in. I'm, I'm actually looking at a different screen than you guys. So I'm going to try to pop back in here. Or try not to pay attention to myself. How about that? How about I just not pay attention to myself? Because that would be more helpful because I can see you guys' comments. So I'm going to talk about the subject, and then we're going to, I'm going to open the floor up to your guys' questions. So if you start feeding in questions, great. But that means that when we get to the questions and start opening the floor up to anything that you may have a concern about, a question about, I'll have to scroll all the way back up and find it and kind of go down the list. So when it's time to get to the end of the list, it can be an hour in, and then it's time to go. You know, So um, if you want to wait until I'm getting ready to wrap it up, start put, pushing in those questions. I'll be happy to talk about them with you. I don't know if I can give you the exact direct answer, but sometimes you just want to hear a second you know, opinion about a problem, or I can relate to the issue in a certain way with something else that I've dealt with. So I feel like that's what's super helpful about the live Q&A. I hope you find the value in that too. Um, so, good and bad, Honda motorcycles. Good and bad. <sighs> this, I feel like, all really comes down to the owners of the bikes and the location of the bike. But at the same time, Honda's put out some bikes that have had some pretty terrible recalls on them. And recalls are not necessarily a bad thing because it's it can really put a dent in our name if we let this go. So we're going to recall it for either an allotted time or forever. Usually recalls are forever. Okay, product updates or, yeah, product updates that Honda will send out for the model will never end. They'll say, hey, you know what, sometimes this is, uh, if you're having this issue with the bike or this symptom, this is the this is the fix for it, but it's not going to be covered under Honda, right? Which you know, there's some gray area there. You're like, well, why the heck wouldn't they cover that? Regardless, we're not going to get into warranties and stuff. But just like off the top of my head, I would say like the the bike that I know of that had the most amount of recalls, which might come to a surprise to you, are the early Goldwing 1800s. Many of you might not know that, but like 01, when it when they first came out, they had some issues, right? So from this year to this year, they had certain frame recalls where the frames had to be sent out to be re-welded on the bottom because they were snapping, right? Um, they had, as of recently, from like 2001 to 2000, I want to say 17, um, they had a brake recall, which covered every single model, every model. Great for me in the wintertime, because I could bang those things out, and Honda's going to pay me what they pay me. Um, that goes for any shop. I, I think we knocked out over 350 of those recalls. It was great during the wintertime, but it was a rear brake recall. The rear brake would, the, the, the relief port in the secondary brake master cylinder. So on the gold wings, you have linked braking. You hit the rear brake, it sends information or hydraulic fluid pressure to both front and rear certain amount to the front more to the rear or vice versa versus when it comes to abs and all that stuff but the link brake system so the that rear brake master cylinder had a yeah the rear brake master cylinder secondary brake master cylinder actually no scratch that the rear brake master cylinder would be sent to a secondary brake master cylinder and that was located on the front left fork right so pressure would would be applied on your brake under heavy heavy braking it would squat the bike which was it worked incredibly i mean to slam on the rear brake and also the whole bike just kind of squats and not lock the rear rear end up i mean it's phenomenal but there was a relief hole in that secondary brake master cylinder that was either getting clogged from foreign material who knows they wouldn't say the rear brake would then begin to drag and in some cases would not move at all once you stopped let the bike cool down it would then roll again. This was smoking discs, wearing out brake pads, and of course, unsafe. And that was a big recall on, on, on the Gold Wings. Is it a bad bike? Absolutely not. There is, there is no, I don't care what anybody says, there's no other bike 
that can hold a candle to the gold wing. I don't care if you're a Harley rider, fully dressed, whatever. I've I've probably ridden it out of all the state inspections I do every year. The gold wing is just by itself a landmark for motorcycles, okay? They spend millions and millions of dollars to dominate that market, and they've done it. Especially, and I don't know about the new gold wing, but, you know, from 01 to 18. Now, uh, all the bikes that I like that are good are... I feel like are friendly to the owner are all of like the HVA systems. So the hydraulic valve adjusting systems, the ones that don't need valve adjustments. I mean, the motors, you never really tap into them unless something bad happens, right? So VT 1100s, uh, any of the CB 750, um, the newer ones past, past the seventies and into some of the eighties, actually all the eighties, there was no 750, some CB. I don't think there was in the eighties and they're all six fifties. 750 came out in the, in, in the 90s, so the newer CB. Yeah. No. No, 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 no. There was definitely an 80 CB 750. No, the 700. <sighs> so many bikes. All the HVA systems, they're great. Okay? Um, you don't have to open up the top end, nor would you want to. Um, the 1100s, the, the VT 1100s, so the Sabre, all, all those models, oh, man, they're just phenomenal riding bikes. Great power. Uh, they have really cool angle on, on the crankshaft to make it sound cool. Honda almost tried suing them over an 1100 because of the way that it sounded on one of their models, on the single pin crank model, because it sounded so close to what they sound like. So, but the bike's phenomenal. I mean, if you keep the oil clean constantly, I mean, the the motor's limitless. Yes, they have shift shaft oil seal leaks. They have potential water pipe or water pump leaks, as of most motorcycles. The VT750 shadows, any of them, they're like the Honda Civic of the Honda world, of the Honda car world. The Honda Shadow 750 is is it's, it's bulletproof. I've seen them go well over 180,000, 200,000 miles before they crap out, even on the 90s models, okay? Great bikes for any owner. VTX1300 and the VTX1800. The 1800 is uh, fuel-injected. Really cool. Super heavy bike. Super heavy. But it's built for a bigger guy, I feel like. Not for me. But they're just fun to ride. Good torque. Fuel injected. Hydraulic clutch system, um, which is different from the VTX 1300. And I can tell you, I can, I think I've pulled a VTX motor out once. Never pulled an 1800 motor out. I'm, you just don't have to. You just don't have to. Um, and those bikes are pretty old. I mean, we're talking 15 years old, 20 years old now. I've never seen one that had to have the motor pulled out over something that's like, it's lost compression, uh, cam chain broke, something crazy like that. You know what I mean? So the VTX models, great bikes. Um, what else I have so I don't get off topic? The newer CB, uh, that retro CB1100 that they did, that's a killer bike. I think the suspension could have been stepped up, but it's fuel injected, cool power, and it looks so beautiful. Especially that red that, that, that they I think it's like a candy glory red or something. Um any of the newer CBRs are awesome bikes. The 300s are great. They're bulletproof motors. Wait, I will take that back. The CB300 motor, that one also had a crank bearing recall. Okay, we did a bunch of those. Um, but Honda recalled it and they replaced it under warranty. Boom, done. Right. Um, so that, so that was kind of interesting. The CB, the new CBR or CB 650F gorgeous bike, piece of art. The newer 600s and 1000s, great bikes, but the 0809 CBR, bunch of problems. Crankshaft recalls. I've done, I did t like 10 of them. Um, and that, and, and that's a tough motor you know it's not really a tough motor to get in and out of but it's just it's a particular bike you know so good that was all good right good stuff cb 1100 750 1300 1800s you know uh, uh, of course i i can tap into the the 70s model bikes um do i think that the 350 was the best bike for now for nowadays i don't think so obviously time has been dealt Okay, there's a lot of parts in there that they just did a bad job engineering. The way they that they, they sent oil to the head and the and the valve um the 
cam holders piss poor idea you know um they were very common to wear out uh the tensioner wheels obviously times delta deal if you build if you rebuild the motor now with brand new parts sure it's, it's gonna be phenomenal you know um obviously the old 750s those are still kicking they still have compression 50 years later they're just it's crazy to see those things still go but of course the master cylinders get clogged up it's just common stuff i i, I wouldn't say that that's a lemon that's just time has been dealt the 70s bikes were phenomenal i love my 450 because i have one fluid to worry about oil that's it oil and gas you know but there's no brake fluid there's, no, there's nothing like that it's just Get on it, start it up, and go, which which I like. Um, now the bad. That's enough ranting about, about the good. The bad. I, want, I probably try not to go that long on the bad stuff. But I think you guys kind of get, or if you guys know me or know the channel, the '80s stuff is just tough, man. It's tough. There was a lot of weird stuff going on in the '80s. A lot of state-of-the-art ingenuity that was going on that was just not ready yet right um a lot of the magnas okay so we're talking about the v64s the v45s the vf 1100s i mean the, dude, the vf 1100 that thing is a beast if you ever ridden a vf 1100 and gotten on it that thing is scary it's just scary it's it's super skinny super tall and it a fuel tank system where there's like a tank underneath the seat and then there's a tank in the there's or no i'm a gas tank a gas tank underneath the seat and a gas tank kind of in front of you and they link together it's like what were you doing like why would you want to if that tank was out under the seat dude, you're done like especially nowadays you're done they're they're unobtainable and once you do find or junk on eBay. It's just a it's just a funny system. I, I I don't understand why they wanted to do that. Maybe to give it more fuel because now you're feeding four carbs to a to a V4 motor. Okay, that's cool. But don't make the tank so ugly and put a tank underneath the seat. You know you don't need to do that. I think that's kind of a weird thing. That's a 80s quirk. The charging systems they went to this electromagnet. Um. Uh. What is it? I, excited what's it called the charging system exciter coil something like that and it was a really high outputting charging system but anytime that you're going to put brushes that are kind of in this weird position on the stator and then send all these windings around it's just like the way that they set it all up yes it was designed to put out a tremendous amount of ac charging capability but the components that they used couldn't hold up to it they had to like they had an ecu and then they had like an icu so they had like a ignition control module and then they had an ecu the ignition control module was mounted in a way that it would just work as like a like a bird bath for water from the way that they mounted it it's just weird that they did that you know um but they were just trying new things so i can't knock them but they're just they're hard parts. They're definitely hard bikes to get hard bikes to get parts for. Um, Honda came out with, with a CTX lineup. Many of you know. I'm not knocking the bike. I think the I've never seen an issue with the motor to this day. They came out with the CTX lineup to like overtake the cruiser, and it was just it not a good idea, right? Indians pumping out these awesome fuel injected big bore cruisers honda ended it with the vtx 1800 then they came out with this ctx lineup big fairing it's it's just kind of weird looking right great cruising bikes they lowered the center of gravity so low that you don't even feel like you're you're like you're on a bicycle it's so light really cool engineering but the body style sucks the engineering doesn't suck, but the body style sucks. I, I, I wouldn't want to own a CTX 1300. I just think it's just, you're just looking at plastic the whole time you're riding, I feel like. You got like this much road and then like this much plastic, right? Um, 
what else I got? The old ST 1100s. Those are those can be kind of finicky. Nobody wants to do a valve job on them. Honda pays like 13 hours to do a valve job on those things. I mean, like checking the valves, like the valve lash. Okay. If Honda's paying you over 10 hours to do the job, it's going to take you probably 25 hours. It's just the way it is. Honda rarely ever hits the mark on their flat rates. Anytime the number is that high, you're like, oh crap, this is I'm gonna be here all week. Um, that's how the 1100s were, that's how the VFRs were, the bigger CC VFRs. I've done head gaskets on the VFR like 800. It's a really cool bike. The only bike I know of that Honda has that's using the uh, VTEC op, the VTEC system. It's uh, so cool. It's really cool. But no one really wants to work on the motors. I don't mind working on the motors, but some other shops don't. Um, then Honda came out with they had this amazing idea to come out with this bike called the Honda DN, N is in Nancy, DN01. Um, Google it, and you're going to be like, I don't get it. It's a auto, it's they were testing the waters on automatic bikes and just Picasso this bike that looks like a hammerhead shark. Um, same with the NM4. The NM4 was like a, con, a concept bike. If you guys have ever seen the N, N is in Nancy, M is in man, the number four, NM4. We call it the bat bike. Very interesting bike, impossible to get inside of. Everything takes two hours, everything. Oil change, everything, everything takes two hours. Um, they just made it into one big jigsaw puzzle and it looks super funky. But I'm not gonna knock the way that it rides. It rides pretty comfortably. Um, so the Magnas, uh, one landmark downfall of a bike I feel like was probably the CX500. And I'm not, and I, and I say all this stuff to not try to hurt you guys' feelings, it's just to give information. Okay, if the bike is treated right and it was kept in good condition and it was, you know, treated like as if it is just the, your prized possession, I have I have ridden and I have worked on the most gorgeous V65, V V45, uh, Super Magnas, those older Magnas, and just gorgeous. They run beautifully because the people don't mind spending the money to make sure that they that they that they run right. Okay. Um, I trust me, they, those are great bikes, but they had weird quirks. Quirks. CX500 is the same way. Um, it was uh, a very interesting bike that they came out with. Where they took the uh, like like a V twin style motor and they kind of turned it sideways, and both heads are hanging out. Um, and it looks cool. Cafe racer guys love the way it looks, right? They want to build a cafe racer around the CX500 all the time. Um, but it was just, it was very unreliable. Uh, the water pump system was bad in them. You had to pretty much remove the motor to replace anything w w with that water pump system. Uh, the gearbox was kind of cool because you didn't have to, like, you could take part of the motor off and get to some of the gear. It was, it was really, it was really, really weird. Um, when you, the handling on it was very awkward because this motor gets heavier the more you turn, you know, like, so getting out of a turn was like super heavy for it. Uh, and like low speed maneuverability, junk. I mean, it's like it's like trying to lean a donkey almost at, at low speed. And when it does go, it's going, right? Um, so then like when you rev the bike, it kind of does like this, like, whoa, whoa. When you rev it, it's really weird. That's probably the most awkward noise I've made in a while. But it's a quirky bike. When they get them to run right, cool. I don't know how long it'll last, but they they look cooler than the way that they perform. We'll say that. Um, the old, I think they had like a CB1000F Custom or a CB1100F, CB1100C something. What a nightmare of a bike to work on. I'll tell you, when it came out of the box, probably great. Probably great. And they got cool power like the CBX does. But this CB1100, man, it's, you got to remove the exhaust to get to the rear brake caliper. To get the rear brake caliper, you got to dismantle part of the engine mount. 
to remove the to dismantle that you got to kind of take some of the air box off and it's just like what why why would you go in that method just make it a little bit easier to work on because if you try to take stuff apart like that now you're going to break something you're going to break it uh exhaust stud i mean back then cool now you're like please go away um, we still work on it. Our, our shop works on anything from anything we've dealt with some really cool bikes 50s 60s and up probably one of the only dealers that still do and i love working on all of them i love working on because i love finding out this information you know what i mean to be like oh man those bikes are cool but i i would not want to change the valve cover gasket on that you know what i mean um so yeah that that's uh what else do i have written down ctx 1300 the gb 500s those really cool trophy bikes man they look cool right that little like street cafe bike but they are pigs they're not that fast and it's very like it's just unrewarding when you get on those things i can a cr85 is faster than those things i feel like i don't know gb 500 great bike can't get any parts. I dare you to to, to eBay GB five hundred parts and see what comes up. Good luck. Good luck. I'm sure that there's a forum out there of GB five hundred. Geo fifteen hundred is a great bike when they're kept in the right hands. That's it. I think that's all I I, I need to cover. I, I, long story short. I don't feel that there are lemons where it's like, this is just a horrible bike to buy. Because in that moment, in the time that it came out, it wasn't, right? It wasn't a lemon. But now you buy the bike and it it's just, you don't want to get into it. You don't want to get into the VT500s. You don't want to get into the older 80 style junk magnas that someone didn't take care of in their yard or the junk cb 650s that someone ran into a curb and bent the frame on those things are are considered stay away from stuff now you know like, like nowadays but it's hard for me to say they're lemons from the start now you'll face a lot of problems i guarantee you any 80s bike you buy any 80s or early 90s bike you buy it's going to be difficult it's going to be difficult to get parts for it's going to be difficult to get information for because they were just one-off style bikes maybe they made them for two years maybe for one the aftermarket companies don't want to spend the money on making aftermarket parts for them because there's not a big demand for them um but are they great bikes when they're perfect absolutely and scene i'll stop there okay that's enough for this is probably going on for way too long so now that that is over i'm gonna go through you guys' comments you guys probably are sending me hate messages because you own the bikes I was talking about. Hopefully not. But let's answer, try to touch base on some questions that you guys might have. I'm, I'm going to be scrolling through, so you're going to look at a face that's like, for a minute until I you know, find the first comment and try to go after it. So I'm going to kind of go down the list. Uh, let's see. Ducks two six six nine. I have a nineteen eighty Honda CB six fifty, and I'm hearing a sound like a flunk. What could that possibly be? Then he wrote another comment and said, "Glunk, bro, I have no idea. I'm like little to no information in that question." You got to give me something else to, to feed off of. You know, is it when you shift? Is it all the time? Is it during high revolutions, during idle? Give me more, okay? I cannot tell you what a glunk is. Um, Eric, the iron and resin shirt. Thanks, brother. Uh, Joe F, for a flunk, I would say battery for a... <laughs> You guys are funny. Someone else commented, for a flunk, I would say battery. <laughs> but for a glunk, I definitely lean towards tire pressure. <laughs> I mean. 
Um, Terry, Terry Childers. Is your name Childers? Is your last name Childers? One of my favorite country artists right now has the last name of Childers. And his name is Tyler Childers. I swear to God, if you're related to them, that'd be freaking awesome. Should I change my cam chain periodically? 2000 CBR 1100XX. No. I wouldn't change the cam chain unless you're hitting 60 to 80,000 miles on that bike. Tensioner, I would change out. If you're at 40 to 60,000 miles on a, on a CBX 1100XX, the Blackbird, change the tensioner out at least. That will help the cam chain survive. Uh, Embry Smith CL350. I love the 350s, dude. I love them. I love them. Okay. I don't dislike them. Uh, Terry Childers again. Honda as a company can do anything they want better than any other company. That's an interesting concept. That's a very interesting concept. And then Duck said, not a flunk, but a glunk. So now obviously it's now a joke. Um, Harry, my favorite Honda is the Fireblade Urban Tiger. Duck said, tire from the motor. Do you know what I mean? I mean, CB650, are those? Are they shaft drive? Are the CB650 shaft drive? I, I thought they were chain drive. CB, it might be shaft drive, CB650. It might be shaft drive. I don't know. What, what model did he say he had? He had the 1980. So it's chain drive. So I would check the chain. Um, let's see. AICD 1999. My 07 Shadow Spirit VT1100 puts out 13.5 volts while riding. It has always been that number. Shouldn't it be more like 14.5? Or it doesn't, it doesn't fluctuate from 13.4. Wait, it doesn't fluctuate from 13.4 to 13.5. I would think that it should be higher. Um, you're also saying that it's puts out 13.5 while riding, which means that if you're checking it while you're riding it, which means that you probably have some kind of voltage meter hooked up. I would verify the voltage meter. I've installed aftermarket voltage meters from good companies that can be upwards of 0.7 volts to a, a whole volt off. So I would double check that with a meter, um, get to riding RPM, like three grand, four grand, with an actual multimeter on your battery, revving it up, holding it to volts DC on your meter, and see what the meter reads. And then look at what your volt meter reads on your the one that you might have installed, if I'm correct. I may be way off. Um, but I'll just double check that. Um, if it is that, if that is the case, check the connection between the stator coming out of the motor and the regulator rectifier. Check that connection there. Um, those have a tendency of burning up on those 1100s, okay? That's still not the case. Check AC output from the stator while the bike is running, unplugged from the harness. The manual should give me some kind of spec. We're looking probably for like 60 AC volts or more uh, on each individual winding. I hope that makes sense. Um, Michael Schaefer, any tips on preventing your bike from getting stolen? Dude, if they're going to steal the bike, they're going to steal that junk. You know, like you can put on... You can chain that thing to your car, but if they're gonna if they want the bike, they're gonna either find a way, cut the chain, take three people, lift it up, throw it in the back of the truck. That's that's really all it takes. I would I would just suggest putting it as close as you can to your front door. I think that that's that that can be helpful um, with a motion light, so that there's not a light that's always shining on it, but there will be a motion light once it. It all depends, man. It really. As close to an area of your house that you can watch. Maybe get a ring camera. That might help. Uh, it won't help if you're not at the house, but it will help if you are at the house. 
you know. Um, you can, I mean, the steering lock, it helps, but again, if they want it, they're going to take it. Um, yeah, it's hard to say. You can bring it inside. <laughs> um, let's see. AICD lamp oil as chain cleaner loop. No, dude, I wouldn't do that. That seems like I'd go way out of my way to get some lamp oil. They sell chain cleaner in an aerosol can. They sell chain lube in an aerosol can. Doesn't need to be super super specific. Anything's better than nothing. But I wouldn't. I mean, I'm sure someone on the internet was like, lamp oil is just the best thing to use. Brother, they make great stuff for cleaning. And you can use Dawn dish soap to clean your chain with a scrub brush. You know, it's going gonna, it's gonna to work great. Um, David's here. Thank goodness. Uh, let's see. I also do have one bit of information to all you guys who are still here. At the end of this stream, I'm going to be sending you an email. But you only get an email if you are subscribed to my mailing list. And this is a special email. Okay, this is an offer that I'm going to give to do so. Okay, go to motorcyclemd.com. Um, on the click through the first homepage, go to the second one. There should be a, a quick button for you to just join the mailing list. You're going to get a free troubleshooting cheat sheet that I put together. You guys have probably heard me that spiel a hundred times. Join the mailing list because tonight I'm sending you an email with a very exclusive offer for you guys to take part in. Okay. It's going to be awesome. Trust me. It's going to be awesome. Um, David, the CB450 is the best bike ever made. It's debatable. Uh, let's see. I love my 7980 CB750s and 84 Saber. Never had any problems. Awesome, Clayton. Um, I'm I'm sure there are bikes that have that have been flawless from day one. Uh, let's see. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. I need a spark plug wire. Uh. I have a VTX 1300C and it has a loud grinding noise coming from the transmission, but the oil is full. That's hard to say, man. Does it go away when the clutch is pulled in? Is it there while you're in gear? Is it there while you're in gear with the clutch pulled in, not moving? I don't know what kind of oil you're using. That could be a number of things. Been on, you know, I don't know how many miles are on it or anything, but some of those motors are just kind of noisy. The, v, the VTX motors, they are. They're. They, I got a hair trying to go up in my nose, and it's so itchy. Um, yeah, but the VTX 1300 motors, they can be kind of noisy, um, just out of the box. Um, let's see. Moving down, moving down. What time are we at? How, how long have we been doing this? I can't find the time. Oh, 40 minutes. Okay. That's fine. All right. Uh, let's see. Keep going. Uh, Buckeye Basin. HT leads. Am I missing something? HT leads. HT leads. Thank you, sir. Matthew, thank you for your help with the carb slide, brother. Dude, you're welcome, man. Got it worked. Hope it worked. But guy, I've checked Amazon, eBay, JP Cycles, and I can't find anything at least not what I'm looking for. HT leads. I think this is just going way over my head. I, I don't know. Okay, I'm moving on. Um, Tony, I thought Amish don't use the technology. Are you on your Rumstein? I don't even know what that is, so it's not funny. Uh, go to car spares. Uh, I have completely trash. Please consume irresponsibly. I've completely trashed my Vulcan 500. <laughs> it's 
thrashed my Vulcan 500. The CV carbs are funky, but other than that, super solid and fun bike. Awesome. ESI Associates Insurance. This is straight company popping up in here. I have a 1976 Honda C50. Oh, I'm sorry. I have a 1975 Honda C. Oh my goodness. CB750A. I don't know why my brain is putting CB in front of it. It's probably because it's, it's supposed to be in front of it. So a Honda CB750A Honda Matic. This is the automatic 750. Um, at idle, the turn signals barely flash. Good battery, headlight, and taillight is always bright. Check the grounds and appear fine. Any suggestions? Great live show. Uh, at idle. Turn signals barely flash. I would try changing your flasher relay. Okay? Try changing your flash or relay. Try cleaning out the connections in your turn signal switch. That's what transfers the power, right? From left to right. Turn signal relay. Try to get like a new old style one. If that makes sense. Um, those relays can be kind of weird. Old school, they get moisture stuff in them and they don't work for crap. That's an option. That's what I would try. It's, I mean, if you've already checked the grounds, then what else is there? Um, dude, Duck, you and this glunk sound, bro. Bro, I don't know what to, what to tell you, man. It's also it's also the knocking that I think is my clutch bottom of the motor. Dude. I don't know, man. I, You've not given me any real direction, dude. Um, chain. If the chain, you, I, 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 I'm just envisioning your chain having like four inches of free play, and you're riding, and it's like whoop back, whoop back, whoop back, whoop back, whoop back. Hit slapping the swing arm while while you're riding, and you're like, well, that's a weird noise. That happens all the time. I see it all the time with people. Um, because you're just not expecting it to be like that. Uh, let's see. Marcus Scott, how's it going, Cody? What is the best source of OEM Honda parts for a 1977 Honda CB400F? I use websites like CMS, C-M-S-N-L, C-M as in man, S-N as in Nancy, L.com. They have great new stock parts. Sometimes they don't have any new stock parts. Um, like Old Bike Barn is a great place to get parts from. Four into one, you got to be careful with what you buy on there. Um, cheap stuff is going to be cheap. Try to go for a little bit more expensive stuff that they have on there. Um, those are three sites. You're not going to find anything much on any of the newer Honda parts websites like Babbitt's Honda or Revzilla or that kind of stuff. They kind of start cutting out parts after a while. Um, and maybe hit up old Honda shops, man, in your area, if you have any in your area. You'd be surprised at what old Honda shops have in stock that they're not advertising because there's no reason to. You know, we have gaskets for an insane amount of 70s bikes that like you're like, oh, here's a left side cover for a SL175. We got 40 of them, you know, so just the older Honda shops, you'd be surprised, man. Um, let's see. Buy a dog and chain it to your bike. There's an option. <laughs> David, I have a CB450. Your friend's fine. Has a typical first gear pop out. Typical. I split the case. <laughs> uh, it's an inside joke. Inside joke. You guys are on the inside. We're deal I'm going to be dealing with a CB450 with a first gear pop out um, that has, the motor has gone through already. So I'm curious as to what it is. David was just, yeah. Um, the out five, any advice on reducing vibrations through the handlebar pegs and seat of a CB450? No, no. You can get new grips on the foot pegs. You can try, I mean, new grips, new foot rubbers on the, on the pegs. 
where you can try to source new handlebar rubber grommets. It's as good as it gets, dude. Those stands mount straight to the frame. Motor mounts to the frame. So your feet are like standing on the motor. Okay, they vibrate. That's just the way that they are. Um, again, you can try new foot rubbers, get some, get some good quality ones, and try new handlebar insert like grommets that kind of feed the handlebars in. That's my best advice on that. Otherwise, dude, just enjoy it, bro. Enjoy the vibration. <sighs> Let's see. Matthew Kennedy, you remember for 100 bucks? Hmm. Join the mailing list. Let's see, that was from my boss. I'm, I'm gonna get ready to wrap this up. We're, we're, we're getting pretty close to the end. Uh, Mark VTX 1300 makes noise clutch in, clutch out. That doesn't matter. 1600 miles, 04. If it's not presenting you a problem, man, and it's just an inherent noise that now your brain has tuned into, it's. Oftentimes, it's one of those things that um, it's not seeming to get any louder or changing in any way with 1,600 miles on it. Um, you can spend thousands of dollars to have someone go into the motor and pull that motor out to look and see what, what's going on with it to potentially not find an issue. It's hard for me to diagnose a noise through messaging. I can try my best. But I've heard VTXs with odd noises, but people put aftermarket pipes on them. They do all different types of things that can kind of throw off the noise vibration stuff. And I'm like, what is it? That sounds not normal, but maybe it is normal. It's kind of hard to say. I would just continue to ride it and try to really uh, listen to see if, it's, if noise is changing with any type of different input under load not under load on diesel. You used to hear all the time, is it only at idle? Maybe try going to a different oil, you know? Um, that may be an, a, a suggestion too. I've heard of people go into the Rotella T6, which is a big debate. I've heard people go into that for certain bikes and they notice that their shifting seems to get quieter. Um, I can't stand behind it, but I've heard people say that it does help with some bikes. It might be an option. Just change the oil up. See if that makes any kind of difference. If, you, if you're using a 30, try using a 40 uh, weight. I wish I could say it's this problem, man, but I just can't. Well, like I said, we don't go into those motors. Like We don't need to. There's never an issue like internally unless someone is bang shifting one and then they ruin it. You know. <sighs> Thoughts on the new Honda Rebel 500-300? They are awesome. The 500 is an awesome bike, and it is... I would ride one any day. The 300s, I think, are just as awesome, but you're going to be outgrowing it very soon. Even for new riders, we will sell them a 300, but it's just, it runs out quick, right? On the interstate, 50, 60 mile an hour, you're really kind of wringing its neck anything over 70. Um, the 500s are just great. I, I had a buddy of mine. This is a great story. I had a buddy um, who drove... Who rode, where was he? He was in New York, rode from New York to, his goal was to make it to California, Texas, something like that. Came into Virginia, first time I met him, right? Got his first serve. He bought the bike brand new and rode that 500, see, the Rebel 500. Rode to Virginia, first service, boom. From then on, I said, I need you to let me know where you go. Because he was like, I don't know where I'm going, I'm just going, right? Ended up in Mexico, took, went from Mexico, took a ship all the way over, eventually made it from the top of South America down to Chile, down all the way to the bottom, went all the way back up, had some trouble with it, you know, but because he was on dirt roads with ruts that were allowing the bike to slide over, but no internal issues, no problems at all. He had went through one battery, I think two sets of tires. Um... Shipped the bike back to Virginia for me to give it a full service tune up and replace everything that he had broken. Rode it back home, then moved to Chicago on it or something like that. Great bike, man. I mean, he loved it. He wished it had a little bit higher uh, ground clearance because he was with bikes that 
should be doing what they were doing. He was just like, oh, I'll follow you too, and kind of went off on it. The Rebel 500 is just a great bike. Um, it's a great bike, especially for like shorter people. No, no disrespect. It's just better for shorter people because the seats sit so low on them. Um, I love the Rebels. I, I, the newer Rebels are just really cool. I think that should do it. Um, a bunch more questions. And there's a bunch more questions. How, how long are we in this? I try not to go over an hour. We're at 51 minutes. Okay, we have eight more minutes. You guys are hanging 10, dude. You guys are hanging 10 for an hour. And you guys are awesome. Tell you what, I'll try to I'll try to, to get through these a little bit faster. All right, uh, let's see. Uh, but where was I? Um, uh, Christian, 1978. Uh, wait, I'm sorry, the one before that. M Matthew Kennedy, do you do mail-in car media blasting? No, but I can get you a connection for potential honing, um, depending on the carb and how bad it is and that kind of stuff. I can do, um, full carb cleans, uh, with an ultrasonic tank here. If you guys have carbs that you want to send me. Email me it, uh, some information on it, and uh, we can work out, you know, what it would cost and that kind of stuff. But I, I, I do have a professional carb tank. I can't do media blasting. But I, like I said, I know a guy who can do vapor honing if he's got enough time and that kind of stuff. But he does a really great job. So if you're more interested in that, get at me through email, and we can kind of maybe talk about it, chew on it. 1978 CB750K, number one carb is backfiring when running. The, then the engine eventually bogs and shuts off. Lean issue, calibration issue. Okay. Running then engine eventually bogs, shuts off. Uh, it could be a rich issue. I'm actually helping a guy out right now. It sounds like he has he's got a kind of similar problem with what you're dealing with. The one thing I would tell you that the carbs are the window. I mean the carbs. The they are, but the spark plugs are the window into your motor. Okay, so putting a fresh set of plugs in and making it fail like that, and then pulling them back out will tell you a wealth of of information. Okay, it could be carb sink. It could be carburetors being too rich. It could be them being too lean, and it's backfiring um, through more than just carburetor one, or it's you know, the plugs will set you free. If they're really dark. You got some kind of re uh, lean issue, um, rich issue. I would check compression on the motor, make sure that that number one cylinder is not dead. Um, maybe doing a leak down test if you want. Um, but that's as good information as I can give you on that. Spark plugs will tell you a lot. 91 CBR 1000 F, changing the fork oil. The top cap is attached to an inner shaft but can lift it up and then there is a space big enough to add oil through. Is that the way to do this? If not rebuilding? No. The top cap is attached to an inner shaft, but can lift it up and then there is a space big enough Yes. I'm sorry. Yes. Yeah. Pretty sure that fork is inverted. Pretty sure. 91 CBR 1000 F. Give me one second, I'm gonna Google it. 91 CB 1000 F. Oh, just give me an image of the bike, dang it. No, not a video. They're not inverted. Regardless, that that would be the way that I would do it. I would think that there'd be a spring underneath that. Um, that cap. I think that's man. I think that's part of the air. The it, if that has the air filler at the top then I want to say that no okay that's the air 
bleed at the top when you can put PSI in it? I would say no. Okay. If no, then you're going to fill the fork from the bottom. So you can take the fork upside down, that bolt that goes to the bottom of it, take that out, and you would fill it from there. Okay. Very carefully. Um, my bottom on those, unless it's not an air bleed where you would fill it from the top. I have a Kawasaki ZX. Man, it disappears. I have a Kawasaki ZXR 404 cylinder, and then when it's cold, it starts great. But when it's warm, it's hard to start. Like the battery was empty. Then I leave to cold down, and it starts running normal again. I would check the starter out. Sounds crazy. I know. I want to check the starter out. All right. Change the battery. All cables cleaned, all contacts replaced. Oh, you replace the starter. And same thing, hard to start when it's warm. I'm lost. Well, now I'm now my mind 400 looks like. I would check the valve train then. I would check the tappet clearances of the valve train. Okay. Um, a lot of scooter. I know this is like a weird resemblance, but a lot of scooters, when you run them top end, boom, what? Because scooters run wide open. That's like what they do their whole life, right? down the road all day and then when you go to start them again because they're hot they don't start because the clearances are the valves aren't opening up as much as they should or they are opening up they're not opening up enough they're either one or the other too loose too tight i've seen that a hundred times check, check, check the valve valve lash clearance okay oh lord if I straight pipe the 91 CB750 Nighthawk, what jet size should I put in it? I would start with five over on the main. That's all I'm going to say. I have an 04 VTX 1300S that when I let go of the handlebars, I get the death wobble at 25 to 50 miles per hour. Fuel injected only rider. Oh, wait, wait. Full fuel only rider near shock set to three. I weigh 280 with full gear. Well, this is an age old question, okay? That everybody asks at least once, at least once in their life. They're like, why does it wobble when I take my hand off? Well, don't take your hands off. A. Reason being, Honda, when they are infinite wisdom, the, made the bike and the geometry of how that bike functions, they want your arms to function as suspension. Okay, so you're holding weight on top of the handlebars, keeping them from vibrating, keeping them from doing whatever they want. You have no idea how many times we've gotten this. Okay, you can check your tire pressures and see what they're at, you can change the tires. You can change the steering head bearings. You can change the wheel bearings. You can change the fork oil and the forks. People have done this until their face turns blue. And guess what? Still happens. Okay? I'm not joking. I'm not trying to make your question funny and laugh at it. It's just the nature of that of what the bike is. The gold wings can do the same thing. Okay? Many bikes. You, you, you let go of, of a GL1000 at 35 mile an hour. Bro, it's tank slapping, and you're going down. Especially, you know, it, it, don't let go of the handlebars, and it won't do it. Is the best answer that we that we we can give people. Okay, it sounds dumb. I'm not trying to, you know, make fun of it. That's just the way it is. On a going 1800, you go you go 45 on some of them. You let go of the handlebars, just they start shimmying like this, right? And it's getting worse and worse. You put one finger. On that handlebar, boom, it's done. It stops. What is the opinion of dark siders? I absolutely hate rear wheel tires on motorcycles. I think it is the most. I think it is the. I'm not gonna start that. I don't, I don't agree with it. I hate the way that they handle. Um, I think it's it's a, it, it, it's a dumb idea. Many people say otherwise. That's just my opinion. All right, so we're going to wrap this up. It's a lot of questions, and it's an hour in. So 
to all you 60 people. I appreciate you. And like I said earlier in this video, if you're just if you're, if you're in here now, I'm, I'm getting ready to send an email out to you guys right after this video. Okay, and it's an, it's an offer I'm offering to you guys. Um, if you're not a on the mailing list for Motorcycle MD, go to the website, subscribe to the mailing list, so you can get this. Okay, it's an offer I'm gonna hand out just tonight. Okay, just tonight for you guys viewing this. I'm kind of keeping track of all that. So if you're already a subscriber and you're a long-term supporter, I know who you are. And um, you're, you're going to get this offer as well. But big shout out to everybody who's new here, who's not on the list. Make sure you hop on tonight. Okay. If there's any night for you to join the mailing list, join it tonight. I have a cool deal going out um, that I think you guys will appreciate. If any of you guys know what the Motorcycle MD Inner Circle is, all, is about, if you don't know anything about it, tonight you should find out. All right, so it's been a long one hour. Thank you guys for your questions. Sorry if I didn't get to your question. Um, I tried my best, uh, and I just appreciate you guys so much. Okay, I have a video coming out this Friday. It will be on static timing uh, for an ignition system um, for adjustable point systems. A little bit of information there. I think will be helpful for any of you old heads who like the uh, old older bikes with the point system. I think it's really helpful. Um, right now in the membership, we are going through VF750, uh, V4 carbs. I have a video coming out on air filter, coolant stuff for it, coolant pipes. We're going through the bike from stem to stern inside a membership. So, and I've, most of those videos will be going out on YouTube. Some won't, but the carbs, been shooting those things all day. It's a blast. Kind of. And that's it. This weekend, I'm going out of town, going going to try and break my ankles snowboarding for the first time so wish me luck you guys have a fantastic week ride safe keep two wheels up on the road and i'll see you guys next time again live q a's once a month you never know when it's going to pop in so make sure you're on the mailing list so you can both get the offer tonight and then the notification for when it starts again thank you guys so much you're awesome later